Hey guys, I did a video, I uploaded it, and I started putting my little comments in it and put my little tags on it, and I said, let me check one more time, and I go back and check, and the information came out, and Vinny Curry is out for the year. I originally made a video, and the video was that I watched the solid presser. And in the presser, it was, I'm gonna put it in the comments, go watch it yourself. The first, watch the first minute, two minutes. It's crazy, you don't know what, what to think of it. The first question is about Becton. Becton was uh, taken out for uh, concussion protocol. The next question is about Vinnie Curry. And it says, I thought something about Curry. He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, but then, uh, we, you know, listen, he, he he's in halls a little bit. And he goes, listen, um, you know, he's going to be addressing the media. And, you know, we're blessed that because of that or this, that we were able uh, to find, you know, you know, other things. And then the next two or three questions are concerning uh, are we at a point now where you're going to have to start looking for a defensive lineman? And then I sit down and I said, let me make a video real quick. And, th and I said, that's, a, that's what I said. I, guys, I don't know what it is, this, that. So I make the video, I go to upload it and I hit the button and then I see what it is. So I figured stop uploading this because I was going to just put in the comments, guys, I found out what it is. And I said, who gives a crap if it comes out later? Let's tell the truth. Let's tell everything, right? So the bottom line is Vinny Curry's out for the year. You know, he's uh, uh, had his spleen removed. It's a blood disorder. He was thankful uh, that the doctors found it. And that's what, that's what Sala meant about, you know, blessed to find it. Uh, he was, he thanked the doctors for finding it because apparently this could have been really bad, um, you know, if they hadn't found it. So it sounds like he was, he, he's a lucky dude that whatever happened for them to, to, to look in that direction, um, they were able to find this blood disorder, which, you know, you, you have a blood disorder and they're moving your spleen. That's, 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 that's big. That's big time, man. That's big time. And he is out for the season, out for the season. So the Jet, the, uh, jet defensive line just took another hit. Guys, I'm going to try something here real quick. I'm going to pause this real quick because i got to check something. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't know if I can check it. My, I have this mic, the Microsoft thing, camera thing, and I upload and edit well, this new editor thing. And it's making this crackling noise one every 10 videos. And I can't find it until... It's over, and I go to play it back, and I got to start the whole video over. Anyway, that's the Vinnie Curry situation. And again, Mackay Becton out with uh, with uh, concussion protocol. They went into uh, Tucker, and uh, again, the pressers down there. Uh, Tucker and um, Elijah Moore will not be playing this Friday, and uh, but they will be playing Week One definitely. He's continuing with that, and uh, he was asked, "Are you concerned that they haven't?" Um, my ceiling fan is like shaking crooked. Are you concerned that they haven't uh, played at all? And he said, uh, no. You know, they were ha they were there for OTAs. They were there for uh, the first week of practice. And they were there for all the walkthroughs that they've done. And they've done uh, a high number of walkthroughs compared to any other year uh, because of their whole uh, Packer eagle. So he's not concerned. That's the bottom line. So, uh, you know, the big question is, uh, you know, how much, you know, the first question is how much will he play Tucker? We know how he feels about uh, continuity because he was also asked, would you ever think of rotating Mant, uh, Fant and Moss? And he said, no, he likes the, you know, he believes in the whole continuity thing, but I think he may have to, you know, whether or not Tucker can go four quarters every snap, we'll find out. But when, and more is easier because you can, 20% of the snaps, 40% of the snaps, six catches for 80 yards in the first quarter. We'll see. Um, so he went into that, and that's pretty much it. He Real quickly, I'll go into it. He was asked a great question. That's 
hits at every single nerve in my body. And I know you guys know this, uh, that I've been watching the videos. He was asked about the preseason, about some coaches playing starters and some coaches aren't. And I just sat there and said, uh, probably another vanilla answer here. And he did not give a vanilla answer, man. He gave you the whole Sunday, man. Cherry on top, too. He said, half the teams are playing their starters and half the teams aren't. He then gave a real interesting thing, a real interesting comment. He said, the teams that are playing their starters are the veteran coaches. And the teams that aren't playing their starters are the younger coaches. Now I do have to pause it. The scam phone calls on my phone. Oh, God, I'd, lo I'd love to get a piece of them. Now the phone will even give that to you on the identification. It's a scam likely. You know what? I should, I wish there's a thing where you says scam likely. Don't, don't, don't process the call. Um, where was I? Yeah, so talking about veteran coaches and, and uh, coaches that have been in the league, you know, one, two, three years, including himself. And his reason... I love the word he used. His reason is, he goes, I have a ridiculously young team. That's exactly what he says. It's there. Check it out. Never lie. I have a ridiculously young team. And, you know, I've got to find out what I've got. He goes, and then he also went on to say, and I love this. He goes, I, I can't be afraid of injury. Injuries. I can't be afraid of injuries. I, I can't coach like that. And then little damn stupid voice in my head went off. I can't stand whoever it is. It's this little damn thing that always creates controversy in my brain. And it said, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference between three preseason games and four? Please explain to me what the difference is. Why did the NFL do it? They didn't lose a game. They had a game on the regular season. So if it's the, the attendance for the year is, oh, God, 70,000, 70,000, 17 and 3 is 20, 70,000 fans, 10 home games, including the preseason, is 7 million fans, 700,000 fans, right? You're still getting your 700,000 fans, whether they're, they're in the building, they're, they're at home, with the tickets ripped up and being used as cat litter for a preseason game. So what's the difference as far as a head coach? What's the difference in his preparation for the season? What's the difference here? Why, how did four preseason games going down to three have a bell go off in half the league, not five people that think they're geniuses, half the league, where half the league's head coaches said, wait, oh, oh no, we're going to play our starters. No, we're going to play our starters. Oh, you're asking me? We're going to play our starters uh, a series or two the first game. Um, maybe a half, probably less than a half the second game. Uh, the third game, we're probably going to play them two and a half or three quarters. And the fourth game, we're going to set them. Yeah. Oh, they switch it to three? Three preseason games? Oh, okay. Um, we're going to play no starters the first game. The uh, second one, we're going to play uh, no starters the second game. And the third game, we're going to sort of play it by ear, see what happens here. What, how, what? Comments. Throw comments there. I promise you, I will, I, will, I will treat every single one like you're correct. I just need to hear somebody else tell me, what's the difference? I'm pissed off, and it bothers me, because I wanted to see Zach Wilson go against a uh, starting secondary. I wanted to see Zach go against a starting defensive line. I wanted our secondary to go against Aaron Rodgers, even if it was for a series. I'm not even that pissed off with Green Bay. I don't get it, but I'm not, I can't get too irritated with an Aaron Rodgers who basically, you know, you can shake him September 10th and say, listen, a couple games, a couple days we're playing our first week of the season. And, and you know, he can just walk out in the field and, you know, complete 65% of his passes for three touchdowns. 
My thing is, is Daniel Jones, who has, you know, 10 season under his belt, seven playoff appearances and two Super Bowls. How, how do you not play a Daniel Jones for the first two games? I, I, I don't understand. It's almost like this preseason schedule has allowed coaches that fear, have just fear losing players. It gave them like it's an open license to not play their players at all. And I'm struggling with it. I don't get it. You know? And I've yet to hear somebody give me anything, any kind of answer that makes sense. And in the game of life, it is so friggin' unimportant. But I've got nothing else going on today. It's a very, very boring day today. Very boring day. Got some really good news this morning, but generally speaking, it's a very boring day. So this bothers me. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Salah then went on to say something really interesting. He said four or five years from now, they're going to do studies because that's what the NFL does, right? They do studies. And they're going to do studies on teams and, and how, how they prepared for three preseason games instead, instead of four. And uh, I say that's great that they're going to do studies, but I think you're going to get a really good idea two times. I think you're going to get a really good idea. Um, no, you may not, because I think a lot of them will barely play their starters on, on the third. I don't think they have the balls to play their starters that long. How do you answer to a press if somebody were to go down at the end of the second quarter because of a hamstring, because of a groin? How do you, how do you answer to the press that you just sat there and let them you know, eat popcorn week, week one and week two of preseason, and now you're putting them in for... For, for 25 plays, you know, you can't do it. I mean, you, they're, they're, some are going to do it. But I don't think you're going to have to wait that long. You're either going to find out perhaps the day after the first, their, their first preseason game, the third preseason week of the season, or a little bit later, but definitely earlier than what Salah said, you may look at the schedule week six and see certain teams that uh, struggled. And is there a chance that those teams that are struggled are the same teams that decided to play their starters? No doubt about it. Absolutely. And the voice in my head just said to me, and the reason why those teams may struggle is that coaches that are playing their starters are probably teams that really need to see more. You know, they need to see that, you know, they haven't had, you know, they haven't been to the playoffs. They haven't, you know, uh, whatever it may be, they, they need to see more. You know, they haven't had success recently. But then the, 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 the Giants aren't play, didn't play their starters. Belichick is playing his starters. But there could be reasons for that too. So... I would think Belichick would be one of the guys that doesn't play him. And you know what? It was still Brady and company. Maybe he wouldn't. You know? Maybe he wouldn't. Because Brady's another guy. You can shake him and you know, he can come out and throw a couple touchdowns. So it's bizarre to me. And I've talked way too long about it. But it, it, I, I just don't get what happened, what the difference is. And it, 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 it's mind-boggling. And it's preseason, so who gives a sh right? I know. I don't know. So what else was asked, Mr. Sala? I think that's pretty much it. I talked about Talker, Tucker. I talked about more. Nothing about the secondary. Since so far, he's been very happy with Sherwood. Um, talked about possibly, you know, he, he was asked several times about bringing in another defensive lineman. He just basically he said they don't grow on trees, especially this time of year. Um, because of the Jets' uh, situation this year and without Lawson and a rookie quarterback and everything else that's going on, there's so many bright spots, yet so many question marks that we're going we're gonna to fill in. A lot of question marks are going to be filled, start be, they're going to begin to be filled in this year. 
Uh, you wonder if Joe, how active Joe will be out there. And if Joe is that active, what would he really do? What would he really give up? You know? What would he really spend? So, you wonder, you wonder there too. So, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and I also said something in the other video much earlier, and I better say it here now. You'll lose Vinnie Curry. You lost Lawson. You're losing your pass rush, slowly but surely. I've talked about the dangers of that, right? The secondary gets more exposed. We thought we were going to protect the secondary this year by having a great defensive line, right? Um, you know, we, we can go on and on. And in week one, Bryce Huff had two sacks against the Giants. And in the off part, uh, the off, uh, the Monday through Thursday part of the week, their articles start getting written about Bryce Huff. And Bryce Huff in the New York Post uh, had an article about him and said, Bryce Huff says he's ready, he wants to prove the critics wrong. And this past Saturday, what I saw was a horrible, I mean, the pass rush remind me of what we've seen the last, I don't know how many years. And the only reason that was never acceptable, but was livable because we were very good against the run. And the Packers ran down our throat this past week. I think we can agree with that, right? So, Bryce Huff, calling Bryce Huff. You did not prove any critics wrong after you had two sacks and everybody was, you know, you're the little baby talk of the town, not much, but you, people were starting to clamor about you. You went out against Green Bay secondary offensive line and did nothing whatsoever. So we really need Bryce Huff to step it up or, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough year. You know, you start losing those kind of guys. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Sorry about the long rant about preseason. I've got to get over it and I will get over it uh, after Friday night. I will never bring it up again. Unless the Giants are like 0-5 or something, you know. Unless somebody that didn't play at all gets injured. No, I'm not going to bring it up. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Remember this. I made a 17-minute video just now. This is the second 17-minute video that I've made in the last hour. Because I made one before that had all this crackling noise in it. And I just repeated myself. Do you know how many times I've done videos over? You guys can have, that have been watching know how many times I've said that. It's so hard to do a video over. So if I came across a little uh, ar uh, aggravated, I apologize. Okay, guys, have a great week. God bless. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. And uh, this Friday night, it'll be all over. And then we get ready, baby. Have a good night. Thanks.